You know, the first thing that you want to do when you go fishing, folks, is work on a boat with gas because fish love to smell gas on your hands. Let me tell you, I just got giants by using gas. I mean, just absolute a freaking idiot. Giant. Welcome to another episode of Northwest Elevations. So uh, today we're, uh, we're on the Columbia, the shatter running, and we figured today would be just a fantastic day to uh, get out and uh, do two things. One, catch shad because there's like thousands of them in the water and they're fun to catch. And two, use some of that shad to maybe catch some sturgeon. We're, uh, we're out here uh, just right below Bonneville Dam and that's the plan. We're gonna go out and catch some, some shad and then we're gonna try to catch some sturgeon. So, uh, stay tuned. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get on with the show. I figure now's a good time to rig up and we'll kind of go over what we're going to do here. When it comes to sturgeon, the rigging is really, really simple. You just got to make sure that you're prepared for whatever you're planning on catching. You know, this is a, uh, nine foot rod. It's rated 30 pounds. Honestly, for big ones, it's probably small. Um, we brought the big the big halibut meat stick, which is probably overkill, but it's what I got, so that's what we're gonna use. Um, the rigging is really, really simple, okay? And I'll show you exactly how we do it. So I always use braid. This is uh, this is probably way bigger than, than need be. It's just what I had laying around. This is 80 pound tough line, okay? Really, really, really big, all right? You probably get away with using 50, which is what's on my other rod. Um, so, real simple. This is how we're gonna start out. We're gonna take our main line. We're gonna take an eight millimeter bead, okay? Doesn't matter what color. I happen to have green here. And uh, that's just what we're gonna use. Man, my hands are filthy. I really should wash my hands. Eight millimeter bead. And then we're gonna take these, okay? Little sliders, sinker sliders, okay? These are the big, heavy duty, tough saltwater ones, okay? You can also use the smaller, not quite so big and heavy duty ones, okay? It doesn't matter. All it is is a, uh, a, a sinker slider, okay? We're gonna take our sinker slider, and we're gonna put that on next so I can get the package with it. And fix it. Sinker slider goes on next. Doesn't matter which way you do it. Just like that. Then, we're gonna do another bead, 
another eight millimeter bead. I think these are eights. Could be bigger. Might be sixes. I don't know. Okay, so this is what you got so far. Okay, two beads and a weight slider. Okay, the beads are simply one to protect your rod tip because we're all stupid and sometimes that gets away from us, and two to protect your knot that's going to go on your ginormous barrel swivel. <clears throat> what are we using? Four op barrel swivels, big ones. Okay. Big, big barrel swivels because you just don't know. You know, we're up by the dam and we don't know exactly what size of fish we're going to catch, but I know there's big ones down here. So we're just going to go big or go home. Okay, and then on to this, only not to tie with braid. Palomar knot. Okay, real simple. Loop over the line. Let me get this. Let me get this. ways of doing this okay you can either loop over your line which is what I like to do or you can take one end through and then take the other end back through once you got your line looped up you're just gonna do a single overhand knot okay just like you're tying your shoes just like that then you're gonna take your loop end and you're just gonna wrap it around your your swivel and pull it tight just like so that's a really really strong durable knot okay we don't got to worry about it failing that's why we use it Clip off a tag end, just like that with these nifty awesomenesses here. And then what you should be left with is this, a barrel swivel, a couple of beads, and a slider, okay? From there, we're gonna go to Bymart, and we're gonna get our handy dandy brads pre-tied sturgeon leaders. Why do we use these? Because pre-tied, now I gotta buy 10 different things. These work really well. Now for some of you guys that like to hunt the bigger stuff, if you're wrapping whole shads and stuff, you might want a little bit longer of a leader length just so that you have room to do your half hitches and stuff. But for what we're doing today, this is these are gonna work fine. Um, very rarely have I uh, gotten to the point where I needed a longer leader length than this. Only a couple of times in my fishing career. These are uh, <clears throat> two aught hooks. I believe they're two aughts. They come in uh, ones. This is a seven knot. I was way off. This is a seven knot. Um, I think the big ones are eights, which are perfectly fine. Um, but we like to use uh, the the sevens. Okay, this is one step down from from the eights. I think the eights are just really big. And if you're going for oversized sturgeon, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The eights are probably the better way to go. Which we have those today too. These ones are going to kind of be the all around. Okay, got to make sure they're barbless on the Columbia. No barbs on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this. And I am also going to tie a palmer, okay, because it's a good knot. But because I only got so much of this, I'm going to do it really small. I'm not going to try and use up as much of the line. Or actually, no, wait, I'm not going to do a palomar knot. Can't do a palomar knot. We're going to do just a regular cinch knot. That way we don't lose all of our line. I'm going to go over four times, which is more than enough. I'm not going to do a, a fisherman's just a single cinch. Okay, I'm going to bring that sucker up, just like so. Trying to maintain as much line as we can, just like that. Give it a good tighten. That way, I don't even got to worry about clipping that tag end off. It's just there. That is the rigging of the day. Now it's time to go slay. See you in a little bit. to go through, pull it all the way through, let it dangle, and then we're going to just do a half hitch. And right there, tighten that up. Okay. Sand trim, nice and fresh. 
pop off a big claw so that it doesn't spin in the water. I always like to put them head down. Just lay them face to face, butt down just like that. Take your magic thread. Thread them on. Don't worry about covering up the hook. When he chews on this, these, these sturgeon, they chew. They're not like a fish that just swallows. They'll actually find this thing and they'll chew on it for a while. As they're chewing, they'll find the hook. Okay. I'm gonna wrap it all the way up to the top here. Hitches to finish her off. We'll just break her thread. That bait's ready to go. And we're gonna start out with just an ever buttload of this stuff. This is Sandra. It's a stiff rod. There's not a lot of give to it. So when the tip starts bouncing, something's chewing on it. that feel, Sam?
There he is. Yeah, there he is. Yep. Okay, go ahead and just bring him forward. Oh my gosh, he's huge. Bring him forward. Good lord. Not quite done yet. I don't know 
number two. I'll let the cameraman have some fun because he's never done this. We don't know what it is yet, but she's coming up. Little by little. Oh, I see color. Oh, that's not too bad. That'll work. Bring forth here. That's probably a, uh, it's probably a four footer. Okay, hold on a second. Let me. What do you think of that, guys? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's obviously a 15 footer. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for more. We got plenty of this coming. going on guys figure we give you guys an update so it's uh 248 it's almost three o'clock in the afternoon man time so uh we've got two fish sam's giant which was just kind of a fluke freaking crapshoot is what it was it was a giant crapshoot because it happened and none of us were really prepared for it and it turned out to be a pretty good fish <laughs> it's just rods there were some rods were still in the water other rods were uh, it was just a mess and then we almost hit this floating thing. We're not research really sure what station. it is. It's a research station down here. So that fish was massive. That was a good, I mean, it wasn't massive as far as sturgeon goes, but it was a good fish. It was probably, probably close to five feet. And I mean, I couldn't pull it out of the water by myself. So it's a good fish. Anyways, second fish. Um, yeah, we let Jerry hook up to it. He's got behind the camera. He's been uh, doing a little bit of the camera work for me. Um, he's just never had a chance to catch one. And so, you know, had to give him the opportunity. Um, his was a little bit smaller, but still, still a good size. Um, that one that you, that he caught was probably, that was close to keeper size. I mean, that was probably real close. You know, it was, it was probably in that 40, I'd say 39 to 45 inch range, somewhere in there. So it was, uh, it was, it was definitely close. So, uh, yeah, we're just, uh, we're having a great time. The sun's finally out. Everything's working real nice. And, you know, we're, uh, we're just enjoying ourselves, having the time of our life. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. Hopefully we can get a couple more in the boat before it's a uh, quick time. We haven't caught any shad. Uh, shad, we really haven't even been fishing for them, to be honest with you. And then we get bit right as, right as. shad fishing a lot much um we, we've thrown a couple of you know a couple of, we're not really in the right water to be honest with you we're a little further out we're sitting in 37 feet of water um i'm sure that if we tried a little bit more we'd probably catch them but it's just been kind of laid back today you know we've just been enjoying ourselves on the boat kind of taking a relaxing break it's one of the cool things about fishing for sturgeon you can just kind of kick back and relax and not have to worry about doing a whole lot and so it's really the perfect layback type fishing on a sunny day so I haven't really caught any shad. Again, though, we haven't really been trying, but you know, all in all, we're having a great time. Anybody can do this. This is real easy to do, guys. I mean, obviously we're in a boat, and so it makes it a lot easier, but I mean, you can do this from the bank too. This is not hard to do. Weight and some squid and some hooks, and you're pretty much good to go. Um, if you have a boat, almost anywhere on the Columbia, you can catch these things, you know? Look for drop-offs, look for ledges, and uh, look for holes, because that's what they like to sit in. And look at where the current seams are, you know? Over here, we got a, almost a back eddy that's bringing the, the water up. And over here, we got so we're literally sitting right on the middle of them to where we can stay anchored, but the current's not ripping the baits around. So that's uh, that's where the sturgeon like to feed in. You know, that's that's their area. So, But, yeah, anybody can do this, man. Come out and try it. This is uh, this is just good, good stuff, you know? There's nothing like getting a, a hog on the end of the line, you know? last two fish we've caught have been pretty good size you know yeah it's been fun so stay tuned we got more coming your guys' way and uh yeah look forward to uh look forward to the next fish fish on guys the last fish of the day
this with the same line on it. You have to change that crap. <laughs> oh man. Hey, that's all right. We are patient. You just gotta stay patient. Oh man, that was a big fit. It, it, when it hopped, when it hopped red.